Can I help you? The grey-coated assistant lowered his magazine to the counter and scowled at the tall, white-haired customer. Oh, yes, yes. We want nails, please. Lots and lots of nails. Long ones. Very, very long, hard, steely ones. Wouldn't you say, Jaysforth? A young lad had crept through the door and was trying to glue himself to the side of the drinks dispenser. Uh, yes, if you say so, Dad. Oh, I say so, definitely. And would too. Planks and planks of the stuff. Did you bring the camels right to the door, Japheth? Perhaps we need to hire a few more. Twenty would be enough. Dad, came the muffled reply. Well, I don't want to be popping back here every few minutes. We must get on. I want the keel laid out by the end of next week. The assistant's black face brightened and he leaned a little further over the counter. Did I hear you say keel, sir? Is it a boat you're making? It is indeed, and I can see from your expression that I'm speaking to a fellow mariner. Is that correct? Indeed you are, sir. Indeed you are. In fact, it was boats I was reading about as you came in just now. I'm after making a little boat myself. A little rowing boat for fishing trips at weekends. I've made a bit of start on it and I'm now deciding on the design for the Rolox. Not as straightforward as you might think, sir. The elderly customer smiled. I can imagine. Certainly, certainly. Rolox, completely. And what sort of boat is, are you making, sir? Asked the assistant. Another rowing boat, perhaps, for you and your son here? Oh, dear me, no, the old man laughed. No, something much larger, much, much, much larger. I don't think we will be rowing this one. What do you think, Japheth? No, my good sir, it's not a rowing boat we're making. It's an ark. There was a stifled groan from the drinks dispenser. An ark, sir? I don't think I've heard of one of those. You sail it, do you? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> There'll be no need to manoeuvre this boat. You s we won't be going anywhere, just up and then down. He flourished a long bony finger, first to the fluorescent tube flickering above him and then down to the peely lino tiles. The dramatic gesture shook the lad from cover. Look, Dad, don't you think we should get on? I've got the order written out here. Let's leave it with this gentleman and wait outside with the camels till they've got it all together. Excellent, Japheth, excellent. Absolutely right. No time wasting. Lots to be done. The son was out of the building before his father had nodded his leave. I'm sorry, sir. The assistant was scouring the list of materials. Does this say wire netting? Yes, my good man, we need bales of the stuff. Some sort of keep net, is it? Exactly. Keep the chickens in and the alligators out. Chickens? I'm generalising, of course. There'll be two of every kind of fowl. Geese, swans, pheasants, chickens, that sort of thing. Between you and me, the noise and mess will be horrendous. But just think of the breakfasts. Ostrich egg on toasts. What a feast. I'm afraid I don't understand, sir. Are the chickens going on the boat with you then? Well, of course they are. How else would they escape the flood? Don't see chickens swimming, do you? The old man's bean black eyes twinkled. This was even more amusing than the pet food store. He shouldn't really tease these dear people. And poor Japheth. He strode across to the glass door and stopped, his smile suddenly vanishing at the sight of thunderous black clouds gathering overhead. Pulling his cloak more closely around his shoulders, he walked out into the drizzle.